Guys, you have been asking me to do a video on this house and it's finally time. And we're gonna go through 10 Al Jazeera fragrances. Find out about this house coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. Joe's here with me. Yes, I am. He is really into these fragrances. I'm loving these fragrances. There's a huge collection of really, really great smells. And for us to decide which one ends up at number one is really, really difficult. Yeah. Or where to put what, because they're all really, really great creations. Mm -hmm. And they're all created by master perfumers. So the brand hasn't really distributed in the States yet, but I believe they're working on coming to the States. So soon you'll be able to get these fragrances. But if you're visiting France in Paris and you're on the Champs-Élysées, stop into their store. You can smell the fragrances and walk out. And I don't think they're that expensive either. They're around 100 to 200. That's incredible. Yeah. And I've mentioned patchouli many times in videos it's one of my favorites it's so good so, so good. i've used a quarter of the bottle already <laughs> <laughs> and when you have as many fragrances as sebastian uh, that's a little bit more difficult <laughs> it's, it's, it's good the patchouli is good and i'll tell you all about it but we are starting off with the first one called al jasra and this are. is a brand spanking new one it's not even on the website yet but here's what the bottle looks like al jasra gorgeous bottle this is created by sophie labay are you familiar with Sophie Labbe? She's a perfumer over at Fermaniche. Also, I have a, if you scroll through my Instagram account, I recently met her for the first time when I was in Dubai, and there's a photo of her and Elias Hermanides, who's also at Fermaniche. But what do we get with this one? Initially, I got a bit of a honey kind of rounded It is honey, isn't it? It's quite honeyed, yeah. But you mentioned that it's probably from the amber, which I also see. It's like got that resinous, It's warm, amber for sure. Golden tonality. It's to golden, it. but it's not thick. It's not heavy. That's why I initially never got honey until he told me because honey comes off very thick to me. Mm -hmm. There's a honeyed vibe. Yeah. But it's more of the amber and vanilla. It's around the edges. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so good. Love. It's oud, <laughs> pink pepper, heliotrope, vanilla, patchouli, cystus labdanum, and cypriol. Oh my God, it smells fantastic. Really, really good. But it's, it's just like a Middle Eastern perfume. Not to cut you off, I apologize. But no, it's, it's, a, it's Middle Eastern perfumery encapsulated in a very wearable and lovable way. It's not offensive. It's just really, really palatable and different just nice and also you know everything is perfectly blended it's smooth it wears smooth there's no rough around the edges mm -hmm. feel about it you just want to spritz that stuff on and keep spraying all over <laughs> anywhere you want <laughs> it's it's gold juice but spray it on white who cares it smells good <laughs> it smells really really good yeah so al jasra is the first fragrance from al jazeera mm -hmm. so second fragrance we're talking about is capri this one right here look at the bottles Gorgeous. they're fun and this one basically has the Capri Island showcased on it. I've been to Capri, beautiful. I spent maybe like six hours there. That's basically it, and I want to go back. So Capri is created by Michelle Almarac. Features notes of apples, patchouli, caramel, ambroxan, oak moss, cedar, and jasmine. What do we get with this one? I get a bit of a transparent, like aromatic and earthiness from this one. And there's also a little bit of a fruitiness. This one... I really enjoy, I think Sebastian likes this one a little bit more than I do. I like it because it's perfect in the heat. Yeah. But it's also super sexy. For sure. It definitely has vibes of another 13 and also Baccarat Rouge, mm -hmm. but in a kind of a fruity direction. Yeah. This line is amazing. No, seriously. This line is really, really amazing. <laughs> like we were saying, it's difficult I can't believe to how good these. it is. Yeah. And I also really enjoyed a, a recent fragrance that I discovered from Michelle Almarac. It was a... Uh, Oh my goodness. It was... Uh, Esprit Saba Esprit from Saba. Rain de Saba. Yes, thank you. Yeah. That one uh, was another incredible fragrance, but I, I like Michel Almarac's work and he did a very good job with this fragrance as well. Yeah. It's not overly fruity. It's got that transparency, but... It's also not overly caramelly, even though it has caramel. No. I think for me, what's really doing it is the oak moss, the patchouli, and the ambroxan mm -hmm. together with the apples and the caramel. Yeah. So good. Real nice. All right. Up next, we've got a fragrance called Jockey. If I can find the front of... Here it is. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so Jockey is created by Dominic Ropion. We've got two fragrances created by Dominic Ropion in this video. Patchouli, leather, Turkish rose, geranium, pink pepper, labdanum, vanilla, musk, saffron, and sweet orange. What do you get with this one? I get the leather. It's definitely Lots coming, of leather. Yeah, it's definitely coming out for sure. But it's also a bit aromatic, which is nice. It's not overly heavy. It's not like 
a super daunting leather in my opinion. I think it's a pretty wearable leather. For me, patchouli is king with the leather. Yeah. And then of course, Turkish rose and geranium. Those are what's really running the show. I get a lot of rose. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it's, you know, it's Dominic Ropian. He created Portrait of a Lady. And I mentioned in another video that this might be like an offspring of Portrait of a Lady, but Portrait of a Lady doesn't have that leather. Also doesn't have the geranium. So it goes in a different direction. But in the end, patchouli and Turkish rose together kind of gives me a little bit of Portrait of a Lady vibe. A little mixture of geranium, Poe Monsieur, and Portrait of a Lady. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say, I was going to say Jean-Claude Elena's Rose and Queer because it has Ooh, leather. Yeah, yeah. It has that kind of a vibe with Portrait of a Lady minus the warm spices of Portrait of a Lady like the cloves and cinnamon and things. And the yeah. fruits, of course, too. A little bit vegetal, I guess. Because yeah. I remember Rose and Queer, that one was very green. Green. Yeah, it was Stems. super... Yeah, exactly. It was like the, the vines of the rose, but... I get that as well in that fragrance a little bit. Yeah, I think it's the geranium that's giving us that vibe. Mm -hmm, yeah. So sure. next up, it's La Forêt. This one right here. This is the only one that's in this kind of a bottle. Mm -hmm. This is also a little bit confusing for me because the name doesn't make sense to me. I smelled this in their store and I really instantly wanted it because it's vanilla. Before I discovered the patchouli, by the way. <laughs> but once I got the patchouli and got to the patchouli, I was like, D damn, I'm going to have this yeah. one. <laughs> but La Forêt is vanilla for me. So I don't get the forest. Isn't that what La Forêt means, forest? Yeah, and the artwork all suggests forest. Yeah, Yeah, and there's even a tiger on it. Trees everywhere. Yeah. So this is created by Jean-Christophe Harrell, and if you don't know his name, he created Aventus. It's vanilla beans, almonds, pralines, amber, patchouli, cedar, and oud. But it's so super tasty vanilla. Mm -hmm. Yum vanilla. Real nice. Yum. This one, I think I might have been fooling myself based off of the name, and I was picking up a bit of a pininess, almost like a slight green, I sappy. Don't get the, I don't get the pine. And it's like, once it dried down, and once I kind of got to know the fragrance a little bit better, I noticed that it was just a vanilla bomb, and it was very, it wasn't sickly sweet, but it was just a really nice balanced vanilla i think it might have been the cedar that, that might have been what i was picking up isn't that a great bottle guys? but this is so delicious <laughs> it's so delicious so delicious <laughs> but there's a the lactonic creamy elements in here the nuttiness in here there's almonds for sure but really great it's yummy it's so yummy yeah the almonds come through for sure and Combining I, again, the name is misleading. I don't get the name. I, I don't either. But I think the bottle is beautiful, the artwork's beautiful, and the fragrance is beautiful. Maybe and that's what matters. <laughs> you're in the forest and you discover a vanilla plantation. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's exactly what it's made about. Yeah. <laughs> really, really nice fragrance though with uh, La Forêt. I yeah. think that one was beautiful. But the whole house is so good. I know that's the it's thing. So it's so hard. hard to pick which one is the best fragrance. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of uh, like similarities between our reviews on these fragrances. We're gonna be like, oh, this is an amazing fragrance is an amazing fragrance because they're all pretty much amazing like yeah. there's not i don't think there's a single dud in no, the whole house there's no dud here yeah at least from the 10 fragrances we're talking about yeah, so right. this next fragrance is called los angeles this one right here look at the bottle this is created by jean-louis suizac he works at iff where dominic ropion works as well this features notes of patchouli oud musk rose labdanum ilang ilang saffron, mandarin orange, black pepper, cardamom. And for me, I wore this all throughout warm, hot Europe in the south of mm. France yeah. when I first uh, started wearing it. And it's so good in the heat, so good. I almost thought this was a Dominic Ropion creation once again. It's got like the rose patchouli thing, but this is not a, a Dominic Ropion. It's, it's mm -mm. Jean-Louis Suzak, but man, it's good. It's so, so delicious. So great. And this one, the sillage is so amazing. It's the patchouli rose oud musk combo. Could come off a bit like oud silk mood from Kirkjian. Mm -hmm. Or it could come off a little bit like black oud, maybe gold rose oud from uh, Terzian Terenzi. But the patchouli is so amped up in here. I love it. It's interesting that you wore this in the heat because typically when you think about oud and rose and all these heavier notes, you wouldn't think about those being good in the heat. But I could see this coming alive in the heat. Trail city. If you yeah. want a trail... If you want people chasing you down <laughs> yeah. with your trail, your fragrance, sexy fragrance trail, wear things like this. It's really nice. The oud and rose and then the patchouli underneath, it just all comes together. And then the white flower from from the along is that white or yellow I'm sorry it's a yellow tropical it's a, ye it's a yellow note. my bad that's on me i said that i was like wait no it's a yellow flower i know this but uh <laughs> anyways it all comes together and i think maybe the ilang ilang could be the reason why it works in the heat because it adds a little bit of that tropicalness it's not a tropical fragrance but no 
I'm just no. I I think it might it might uh, kind of contribute to kind of smelling really great in the heat because mm-hmm. it gives it a bit of a humid vibe, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the cardamom and mandarin because I always I always see cardamom as like a kind of like a fresher spice, a little bit cooling. So that also might contribute to that, but really lovely fragrance. It's a really great one. Mm-hmm. Next up, we've got a fragrance called Magic because it is magic. <laughs> yes, it is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so Magic is created by Lok Dong, features notes of Turkish rose, pralines, amber, extreme, vanilla, ozonic notes, patchouli, vanilla, and salt. And I get bubblegum with this one. I do as well. Bubblegum City. Mm-hmm. So I feel like there's white floral notes in this, but I'm not seeing white floral notes mentioned. Yeah, I get a jasmine tuberose yeah, I do. mixture in it. Yeah. But it's not it's not listed, which is interesting. It's Turkish rose and pralines. I think maybe that's what's giving us the bubblegummy vibe. But Possibly. normally with white floral notes like tuberose is when I get like a really bubblegummy effect. Mm-hmm. But the pralines adds a gourmand edge, lots of amber for really the uh, amber extreme, I should say, for that strength. And then, of course, we've got sweet notes in the dry down. I'm not getting the ozonic notes and the saltiness with this one. Nor am I. But I think it's a nice creation. Yeah. It comes off a bit playful and maybe more like kid-like to me. A little bit. Yeah, like a young girl bubblegum blowing here and there. (laughs) (laughs) I, I think it's that, but I also think it's a little bit more grown up than like your... Because I got a little bit of a dirtiness with it as well, which I, I'm not sure if you were picking that up, but I got a slight dirtiness from it. I'm not too sure where it's coming from, but like there's an underlying dirt. Yeah. <laughs> a funk? There's an underlying funk for sure. And I, I think we were talking about it and we came to the conclusion that it might have been like possibly an endolic jasmine. Again, it's not listed, but we do get a bit of that white floral bouquet going on in this fragrance. Maybe they're not crediting the the white floral notes, but we do get it. But then also... To me, this kind of goes into a bubblegummy direction of something like Montal's, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Intense Cafe, okay. without without the kind of uh, the uber milkiness. Yeah, without the coffee. Coffee, yeah. yeah I don't sure. know, that's what it's kind of taking me in the direction, but more going into, rather than becoming a latte, more like bubblegum. I see that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can barely pick up when he mentioned he didn't smell the salt i barely pick up the salt and i think that's probably contributing to the praline and the vanilla kind of making like a maybe like a salted caramel accord but it's very faint mm-hmm. like it's not that gonna be very present in your experience from wearing it unless your skin brings it out but altogether, i think it's really good it's a good one yeah so i wasn't able to find a perfumer's name for this one but this next one is called malachite this one right here it features notes of cashmiran, oud, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, and rose. So what do you get with this one? First off, I really enjoyed the cap on this one. I, th- I think the cap is really cool. That gold piece just kind of pops off and yeah, it's different looking. You don't really see too many. For me, with this one, again, obviously you have the oud and rose, but I got a bit of a... I got a bit of a creaminess from the sandalwood. It's not necessarily a dry oud and rose in my opinion. This to me is musky woody. Lots of musk. Lots yeah. of oud. A little bit of patchouli. Not too much patchouli, but I get more so of the, the oud and rose playing in with the sandalwood. That's what I get a lot of. And then the musk is there as well. It's quite powdery, but also kind of cozy. Mm-hmm. The sandalwood's creaminess is giving off very much very relaxed and soothing vibes. And you wouldn't think an oud would be cozy, but it no, is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of oud they have in here. There's no funk. Mm-mm. It's mostly just woody, maybe just a very western oud. Yeah, it's like kind of like just a dark wood, if you could imagine. Um, just put some a base into the fragrance to give it like the base for it. You get a bit of a sweetness in it as well. It is pretty sweet to yeah. me, actually. Yeah, oh. it's quite sweet and powdery. Yeah, I but like, I, I like that one. I do too. I'm not too sure where the I like sweetness it more is than, coming from, but yeah. Which one do you like it more than? I like it more than uh, magic. Yeah, magic just seems very young to me. I could see. I that. mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but malachite seems a bit more mature, and I like its whole cozy vibe about it. Next up, we've got a fragrance created by Julian Rascone. It is called Marrakesh. This one right here. Look at this bottle. Oh yeah. So this is Laotian oud, amber extreme, cypriol, vanilla, apples, patchouli, cedar, nutmeg, and cinnamon. This one. Really, it does smell like a typical Middle Eastern gourmand oud fragrance mm-hmm. that's super cozy. Yeah. And the fact that I've mentioned that Julien Rascone does great work with apples. I mean, not apples, fruits in general. Mm-hmm. 
this the fruits comes alive in this one. Oh, it really does. And the spices do too. It's kind of like reminiscent of an apple pie. A little bit. It's a bit apple pie with vibes. A, with a thick syrup in it. Yeah, for sure. Like a really, I don't know what kind of syrup they'd use, but the very... It's Molasses. Like, yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like a, a slow moving syrup. But um, the oud also comes out. But the oud in this fragrance, it, it adds just depth. And it adds like a darkness and a bit of a... I, I mean... Going back to Malachite with the oud, mm -hmm. it's not pronounced. Here it is pronounced, but mm -hmm. still very wearable. There's nothing animalic about this one once no. again. It's an oudier oud, yeah. but it's in a way that works really well with the rest of the fragrance. And it kind of creates, a, as opposed to being just strictly a gourmand, it goes into that more, like Sebastian said, that Middle Eastern gourmand direction where they add depth and it's a little bit more complex than a typical gourmand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like that one. He did a great job on that. Really nice. And uh, gives me holiday vibes with the apples and cinnamon too. For sure. I'm just with an oud. Like, you like the oud? Go for it. Go for it. Next yeah. up is my favorite of the line. It's Patchouli by Olivier Cresp. So Olivier Cresp created a fragrance called Angel. Are you guys familiar with that fragrance? Way back in 1992, so it's over 30 years old. This one gives me Angel vibes, but in its original form, mixed with... L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Au Extreme, the original version of Guerlain's L'Instant. If you like that fragrance, <laughs> you must, you must get your nose on it. But guess what? I was in, in their store like a couple weeks ago. They were sold out of this fragrance because I've been hyping it up too much. Yeah. <laughs> but this is patchouli, honey, cumin, nutmeg, pralines, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. Really good. So so good. It smells like autumn in a bottle. That's that's what I get with it. There's a little bit of a sweaty funk here, but it's a very dry fragrance. It's sweetened up with the honey, warmth with the nutmeg and pralines, and then that creamy sandalwood, the vanilla, the the, the syrupy vanilla. I, I think it's perfect. So good. Yeah, it's it it is definitely on the drier side. It almost has like almost like a a hay accord in there, almost that's what I pick up. But not barnyardy at all, but no. a little bit hay. For me, it smells like autumn, and that's the best way I can describe it. Like, the leaves are changing, and everything's a little bit more colorful out. And this is just what I smell. It smells so, so good. He said, hey, I'm thinking of more like mate. Are you guys familiar okay. with mate? It's green and grassy and earthy and tea. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting in, instead of the hay. I can see that. But uh, it's the patchouli that dominates here. and. Yeah. Just the way I like it, man. It's named patchouli, and yeah, it's rightfully named that. It's such a good patchouli. Yeah, yeah. this is like, yeah, if you like Angel and L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Au Extreme, uh, you got to, got to get your nose on that. It's just taking those two fragrances and having a child called Al Jazeera Patchouli. Yeah, and also, just for you folks to know, it's not necessarily a medicinal patchouli, but it's, it's, one, it's almost like a damp patchouli, I get, but... Yeah. It's damp and dry. Yeah, it's a weird mixture, but it, it works so well. <laughs> it's so, so good. Yeah, patchouli is phenomenal. One last thing I should say. Mm -hmm. I always mention chocolate cakey patchouli. This is not that. Do mm -hmm. you get that? I don't get chocolate cakey. I don't really get a gourmand edge. I get more of the the actual patchouli. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because when you combine notes like amber and uh, balsams and resins, along with vanilla and the patchouli, it creates that chocolate cakey accord. This one does have vanilla, and that's basically it, so it adds some sweetness. And the vanilla is also not very prominent in this. It just sweetens up the fragrance a bit. Yeah. But it's a fantastic fragrance. It's an incredible fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the tiniest of the bottles, we have a fragrance called Venice. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another fragrance created by Dominic Ropian. I prefer this one over Jockey, personally. It's apples, pentagram, bergamot, violet, flower, orange flower, jasmine, musk, vanilla, amber wood. What do we get with this one? I get a bit of a fruity floral with this one. I think it's really nice, but I, I do agree. Uh, I think this one's a little bit more to my liking than Jockey is from the two Dominic Ropions in this collection. It's good. It's a very fresh fragrance. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like spring flowers and spring fruits together. Yeah. The apples are quite juicy and drippy. There's yeah. a crispness about this fragrance. The pentagram adds that green, citrusy, bitter, earthy layer. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. I think I really like that one over Jockey. It's a very pretty fragrance. It's pretty. Yeah, it is. And it does lean a bit feminine. It's a little bit feminine for sure. But I think, I mean, we say wear what you want when you want. So <laughs> do what you want, you know. But... 
I think it's a very, very nice fruit floral combination with like what Sebastian said with that crisp edge that kind of will uplift your spirits if you're like super sweaty on a hot day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's perfect for a summer hot summer day. Yeah, you, it's, we, we mentioned fragrances that you could spray on and just kind of feel uplifted and freshened up. And I think this is totally one of those fragrances, even though the note breakdown doesn't necessarily suggest that it's not citrus heavy, but the fruits definitely allow for freshness yeah the fruits and the flowers together will give you that fresh feeling yeah really nice though yeah Mm -hmm. love that one yeah so we're gonna quickly run through our ranking as of this uh, shooting i'm feeling number 10 magic it's the bubblegum one created Mm -hmm. by lock dong i'm fine with it but it's such a good collection of fragrances i have to put magic at the bottom yeah it's so hard to rank these my number 10 is going to be jockey uh Surprisingly, I have both the Dominic Ropion ones at the bottom, which is, I love Dominic Ropion's creations. I think they're amazing. But again, this was a difficult house to rank. I have, so you ranked Magic high? I, I ranked Magic at seven. Okay. So not super high, but higher. Okay. And I'll explain why. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Jockey for me. Okay. Um, I like Jockey, but it wasn't my number one favorite uh, fragrance from Dominic Ropion. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's fine. It's Again, it's very difficult to rank these fragrances because they're such well-made fragrances. Yeah. Whoever does the curation and the selecting of the mods and everything does a great job. They pick really great fragrances. No, they really do. They have good noses behind these for sure. My number nine is going to have to be Venice. So like I said, the second Dominic Ropion is going to be, and I just spoke highly about it, and I do speak highly about it. It's a good fragrance. <laughs> but um, I'm, I have to have it at number nine based off of the other creations in this house. I think this one... Not necessarily fell short, but for my liking, it's not what I would typically go for. Again, fruity floral isn't my forte, but a, still a really great fruity floral if that is your liking. My number eight is Venice. Again, very tough to select where to put what fragrance, but Venice was a bit on the feminine side. I enjoyed it. It smells really, really great, but against the other fragrances, I did have to put it at number eight. But if you're looking for a really great fruity, fresh fruity floral fragrance, you gotta try, try Venice. Yeah, my my number eight. I'm actually switching around. So I had um, I had Magic at number seven, and then I had Capri at number eight. Now I'm gonna switch it around. So I'm having Magic at number eight. <laughs> um, so you are getting pushed into putting the Magic low. Well, no, I already had it fairly low. <laughs> Lower. But, well, I I did mention er- earlier in this video that when I smelled Capri again, I started to think, and I was like, this is actually a pretty good fragrance. So that's why I decided to buffer it up one. Um, okay. So real, magic at number eight. Yeah, magic at number the eight. The magic of number eight. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so my number seven is malachite. Okay. I really like this kind of gourmand, oudy kind of uh, praline, kind of a Middle Eastern fragrance. Yeah. Very nicely done. Mm-hmm. So I put that one here. I it's mean, really again, it's it's just really tough to select what to put where. And yeah, I seriously. think... The, the entire series. I mean, <laughs> I, I would wear any one of these. Yes. Yeah, I mean, my preference is patchouli at number one, mm-hmm. but I would wear any one of these. Yeah. So my number seven, like I just said, I'm going to have Capri. Uh, I think on a hot day, again, I think that one, and I know Sebastian has this one ranked high. I think Capri works really well in hot weather. And I it just didn't scream out to me as some of the other ones did. And that's the reason I have it a little bit lower. But I think that one could definitely warm up to me. Okay. If, I, if I if I get to know it a little bit better, I think that's one that I think I'm going to start to take a liking to for sure. Okay. So number six is Marrakesh. It's a kind of a rose oud fruits combo created by Julian Raskane. Mm-hmm. Again, really nicely done. Every one of these is really great. Yeah. But <laughs> I think the oudy ones are ranked a little lower than yeah. normal. So I'm putting Marrakesh at number six. Okay. And then I have La Forêt at number six. Um really good vanilla fragrance although the name again is a little bit misleading Misleading name yeah fantastic vanilla fragrance though and if this was in any other house i'd probably have that as a number two or a number one like that's how these rankings are going but i have that in a number six just because the rest is so good (laughs) (laughs) i've got at number five la forêt okay again these are all interchangeable i can put one and remove the other or whatever but la forêt really really great lactonic nutty almondy vanilla fragrance misleading name but maybe 
it'll transport you to a forest if you wear this vanilla. Possibly. Who knows? <laughs> you'll find a vanilla plantation in the forest. And then uh, for me, my number six, or sorry, my number five was Malachite. Um, I'm going off what Sebastian said again. I think the ouds were really good in this house, but there was a few other ones that stood out a little bit more. Uh, Malachite was, again, really great. I love the cap on that one, but I have it at number six for this ranking. Well, I think it's because of the... You have it at what? Number five. Number five. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that ouds are just, I don't know, ouds are getting boring. I keep saying that. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for some different things yeah. versus ouds. But the ouds are really nicely done. No, they it's are. It's just they just get ranked lower because I'm bored of ouds. Yeah, I get that. So my number four is Al Jasra, the newest fragrance, which I think is your number one. Yeah. I think, I didn't think of honey when I first smelled it. As I was uh, saying earlier, I think of honey as being thick. Mm -hmm. This didn't come off like that. To me, it doesn't smell like tobacco honey from Guerlain or, uh, you know, bee from uh, a zoologist. zoologist. Yeah. But when you think about it, you might get that. But for me, it's the amber and the oud all rolled into one. It's so super refined. Mm -hmm. Nothing stands out. No rough around the edges. Just wears beautifully. Just want to keep wearing it. Yeah, seriously. So I put that at number four. Yeah, okay. My number four is going to be Marrakesh and... I really enjoyed this oud. I thought this one was really good. Again, there are a few fragrances that I have higher, but I think Julian Raskinet did a really, really good job with Marrakesh. For what it is, I think it's a beautiful oud. Okay. Yeah. My number three is Capri. Okay. It does wear really great in the heat. I wore that last uh, September in the south of France. I wasn't in Ca on, on the island of Capri, but I was in Cannes. You were out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it does wear really, really nice. Uh, it's strong. It's super strong. So a little goes a long way. The fruitiness is really great. The caramel is really great. And I love that patchouli and oak moss combo with that one. For sure. Really great sillage. If you like that kind of a, another 13 Baccarat Rouge-like vibe with those other notes, uh, definitely try Capri. Mm -hmm. And then for me, my number three was Los Angeles. I think Los Angeles is a really... Hey, look at that. <laughs> We're agreeing on that one. No, no. I'm oh, wait. A, well, yours is at num you're, you're at number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, mine is coming up. Sorry. Yeah. Shoot. I <laughs> Almost. Just, I just... That was a total spoiler. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> I'm a little bit late, but love this rose with the patchouli. It's really, really beautiful. It's like a... It's a bit of a... A sheepra, sheepra like, yeah. It's sheepra like for sure, but rose sheepra. Yeah, and there's a, there's an effervescence to it. There's like a, a bit of a, not necessarily sparkliness, but I also don't want to say airiness. But it's it. Sebastian mentioned you could wear it in heat. You could definitely wear. I it wore in it heat. in the heat. Yeah, and it screams and it smells great. Yeah, great trail. Beautiful. Which fragrance. leads me to number two. It's my number two. I love it. I love that fragrance. But you know, I have to put my number one as as a patchouli, but. Los Angeles has lots of patchouli. It's mm. lots of patchouli with rose, and yeah. the combination is really intoxicating. It's gorgeous. And super sexy. Yeah. My number two is patchouli. Sorry, Sebastian. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. <laughs> patchouli is so good. And really, when you get to the top three of this house, that's when they really start shining. And patchouli is just, again, I'll mention it, it's autumn in a bottle for me. Like, if you're looking well, for a look good... look at the bottle. It looks like autumn. It does, yeah. yeah. It really does. It looks like fall. Yeah. And I, that might be part of the reason why I'm smelling it like that, but it's the kind of patchouli... I mean, I like my chocolate cakey patchoulis as well, like Sebastian does, but this kind of patchouli isn't in perfumery too often. No. And when it's It's done, unique patchouli. It's very unique, and it's done so, so well. The execution was perfect on it. And I don't think there's any flaws to that fragrance. No. Which leads me to my number one, and it's patchouli. Look at that. I really, really, really <laughs> love that patchouli. I told the store, I'm going to come back and buy three bottles. Please make sure to have more in stock because they, they they were completely out. And your number one? Is Aljasra. Aljasra. So beautiful. Again, when I first sprayed it on, I got a bit of a honey vibe. And I don't usually like honey fragrances, but... It's not a honey fragrance by any means. It's not super syrupy and sticky. It comes off honeyed. It, it Yeah, like I mentioned earlier with Sebastian, it's around the edges. It's definitely honeyed, and I love it. It's a really good amber vanillic fragrance, and it's... Drizzle of honey. And a little drizzle of honey, <laughs> and that little Middle Eastern flair that they like to put in their fragrances, and it just comes off beautifully. Are you familiar with Sophie Labbe? No, I know the name. I don't know the creations, though. If I smelled her creations, I'm sure I would. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool.
This is a great house, guys. Hopefully, you guys will discover it. Both of us are really impressed with the quality, top-notch quality, mm -hmm. and also not very expensive. Yeah. Uh, if hopefully, you guys will get to try them. Uh, hopefully, they'll be here in the States soon because I know they have websites all over the rest of the world, but none that delivers to the USA. So I'm hoping that sometime in the near future, you'll be able to buy Al Jazeera fragrances. But either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.